In our last blog post, I talked about the need of isolators when weighing highly active substances. What is the general technology inside the isolator? In an isolator, constant negative pressure is maintained, usually in the range of 100 or 200 pascal. This is done by the isolator's air management system. A fan is used to create a constant airflow that is exhausted from the isolator enclosure. Supply air into the isolator and the exhaust air out of it is filtered through high efficiency filters. The exhaust air filters are highly loaded and cannot be replaced just like that. They are changed via the so-called push-push system. The used filter is pushed into the isolator with the new filter and this one replaces the old filter at the same place. The old filter can then be placed into a transfer bag inside the isolator and disposed outside. This principle offers us a much higher uh, level of protection for exhaust air filtration and for changing the filters. The supply air filters are less highly contaminated with the active substance. That is why the filters are changed here according to the bag in bag out system that you probably know. For changing, the filter is put into a plastic liner and the operator and the technical area are protected from contamination. If new processes need to be implemented in your isolator, it makes sense to test the accessibility of the individual elements in the so-called mock-up before building the isolator out of metal. One of the disadvantages of the isolator is that you have to carry out your work through glass plane and protected by gloves. A mock-up is a wood model of the isolator that is used to try out how the components in the isolator can be placed as ergonomically as possible. The available arm length of the operator is around 600 millimeters. The components have to be within this range so that the operator can reach them at all times. The markup is not an exact copy of the later isolator, but it is limited to those components, essential components, which are placed in the wooden model. Before working with the isolator, it makes sense to carry out a leak test to check if the isolator and the gloves are tight. After all, the tightness of the system is what makes the safety for the operator. In a leak test, a slight overpressure is applied to the gloves and it is measured whether and how quickly the overpressure is released. If the pressure drop exceeds a permissible level, the gloves must be replaced. You can also do this during operation without breaking the containment, so changing is possible even then. The leak test of the isolator checks how long the isolator holds the negative pressure. This is done before the actual work to identify, find and fix any leaks. Of course, the isolators are controlled by a PLC system, which controls the airflow, the negative pressure and the functions of the automatic valves in this isolator. If the isolator is inerted with nitrogen, the correct oxygen content is constantly monitored regulated and in emergency cases the appropriate emergency functions are carried out to protect the operator and the product. Of course, cleaning can also be integrated into control system. So, that was really a lot of, of information in one go. I would like you to take home with you that isolators have their own air management system which controls the airflow in the isolator and the negative pressure inside. The exhaust air filters and the isolator are changed with the so-called push-push technique, which allows to be carried out with the utmost safety. And in the mock-up, a wooden model, isolators can be tested for their ergonomics before they are made of metal. That's it for today. As always, if you have any question, just send me an email to focusing.containment at glut.com. 
I will try to answer your questions in one of the next sessions. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned.